G'day folks, welcome back. So we're going to carry on with our series of simple transistor projects demonstrating different uses for everyday ordinary old transistors. And this one here is going to be the second last in that series. Both of these are oscillators. We've dealt once with oscillators in our very first transistor project. And then we did a bunch with amplifiers and now we're going back to oscillators for a couple of interesting little projects. This one here is, is called a jewel thief. I don't know if you ever heard of such a thing, but uh, notice the way jewel is spelt. It's uh, spelt after the, the name of the guy who came up with the unit of the jewel. And uh, what this is, is a, is a voltage booster based on a blocking oscillator. And what you can do with these things, you, you, can, you can put a very low voltage into them. I mean, they'll basically work uh, down to an input voltage that's uh, just above the base emitter forward voltage of the transistor, so about 0.7 volts. Um, I haven't actually seen that myself in practice, but I've seen it go down well below a volt. And, uh, and they boost that voltage up quite substantially. And we'll get into that a little bit more, but I'd like to break now for a little word from our sponsor, PCBWay. One of the really cool things about working with PCBWay is their complete clarity into the process that they have. So here's a board that I ordered uh, yesterday and I can go in and I can look at the production tracking on it. You can see every single step of the way. So these are all the main steps along the production line here. And if you have any questions about what each of these steps mean, you can, you can go over here, you go to view details and it'll come up and it'll tell you exactly what each one of these steps is, provides you information about the step shows you what the step is like, and you can get further information about the process. Etching inner layers, drilling PCB, plating, it's, it's quite phenomenal, the amount of information they share with you about what's going on with your boards. Once you start uh, using PCB Way, your knowledge about PC boards is going to increase dramatically. It's basically 24 hours after the board is put in, it's then ready for shipping. So at this point now, it's ready for delivery. And the next thing that will happen is the, the shipping department will send it off to me. Let's get back to our little project. All right, so let's have a quick look at how these little circuits work. They're very, very simple. A single transistor. And most of this over here is, uh, you know, just add-on stuff to have a look at what the jewel thief is doing. We've got a single transistor, a resistor. We don't need the adjustable one here, but I'm putting one in just so we can tune it a little bit better. But usually, you know, a 1K resistor is all you need. And then a little transformer. Now, this little transformer is usually wound on a toroidal core. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be tiny. I've done ones from about a bit over a quarter of an inch in diameter to about a half an inch in diameter. And basically, both of the windings are wound in the same direction at the same time. Usually, just about 20 turns of number 28 or number 30 magnet wire. So that's a simple circuit here. Now, one of the key things in all of this is that if we consider these two windings to be parallel, so this is wound in this direction, and this one is also wound in this direction, then we need to cross them over so that the current flowing through this part is reversed in this part. And that's key to the way this thing works. So how does it work? As soon as you turn the power on, current will start to flow down through the primary of this transformer, through the resistor, and into the base. The collector will be turned off, so there'll be nothing being conducted through the transistor. As the base voltage rises, the transistor will start to conduct. You'll get a little collector current. That collector current will then, through induction, increase the voltage in the primary, pushing the base higher in voltage. And this continues around like this until the fact that you've got this transistor here in saturation. At that point in time, the current can no longer increase. You'll have a steady state current here. With a steady state current, you can no longer have inductive connection between the secondary and the primary. So what happens at that point is, well, then that little boost you're getting while the current was building here drops away and the base voltage drops dramatically, causing the transistor to start shutting down. As soon as the transistor starts shutting down, you'll get a negative change in current. So the current will start dropping in the secondary, which will drive the base negative. This shutting off the transistor completely. Once the transistor shuts off, and that happens very rapidly, 
you'll get a flyback effect in the secondary of the transformer, causing the voltage here to rise rapidly, and it can rise to a significant level. Now that voltage then becomes available to whatever is on the output here. So we're going to have an LED, and we're going to have this diode going to a capacitor and then a, another output. And what I'll, what we'll show you the demonstration here is that the LED will light up. It'll just light at a constant steady state. And you'll see that the current will be low and the voltage will be low. Like this voltage will not rise much above the forward voltage of the LED. Now, if we connect it up to go through this uh, diode here, which is a 1N60P, it's a Schottky, a germanium Schottky diode. So it's got a very low forward voltage on it. And that's the reason we chose it for this project. Every time the flyback occurs, you get a pulse of voltage through here to charge up this capacitor. Uh, I'm not going to let you know. Well, you can tell here by the voltage I have rated here. I'm not going to let you know exactly what we can get out of it, but, but you'd be surprised. You put in a volt here, and you can get quite an amazingly high voltage at the end of this, but we're going to leave that to the actual build of the project and the testing of it. And now you can use this output for whatever you want. So you can use it as a high voltage DC power supply as long as you don't require a lot of current. This will only deliver a few microamps. Uh, but that's sometimes very handy. When you need it, you need it. And you can do other things. And that's one of the things I'm going to show you in the project as well, is one of the other uses that I've used these for before. Okay, let's go over and have a look at the boards I worked up for this. Here we go here. It's a very small board. Uh, you see here it's about 50 centimeters by 25 centimeters. Yeah, so that for you imperial folks out there in Myanmar and the United States, that would be about 1 inch by 2 inches. We've got our input here, so our low voltage will be coming in at this point. What I tend to use for this are batteries I have no use for anymore. They won't work in a remote control or they won't work in some other device. The device is complaining that batteries are low. I'll pull them out. I'll stick them to a jewel thief. This is where our transformer will be. These are our resistors, our transistor. And you can see what I've done here yet again. I've, I've used single-sided layout for the traces. And on the back, I've got a ground plane. What I always do, it's if I can do it, if I can put the traces on one side and the ground plane on the other, I always will, just force a habit. And I've left the traces as big as I can. Uh, they're limited really by the, the transistor here. If I make them much bigger, then they get too close to the transistor pads and the EDA complains. Well, that's it, but nice, basic, simple board. And we have polarized inputs and outputs on it. And we have test points. So I put a test point for the output voltage. I put a test point for the ground that we can hook up with an oscilloscope. One on the collector of the transistor and one on the base of the transistor. And we can monitor the voltage across the LED. If we jumper here, the collector voltage is going to be the same as the voltage across the LED. And you'll see how that is very different from when the collector is open or from when we have the collector hooked up to this capacitor through the diode. And you can compare the collector voltage to the V out. All right then, folks, I've got these boards are ordered. They're in manufacture for us over at PCBWay. And when they come in, we're going to build up one of these and have a look at uh, what's happening in it. It's a, a nifty little circuit based on what's called a blocking oscillator. And that blocking occurs when that base voltage goes negative. The current down through the collector is blocked immediately. And that causes the flyback, which gives us our voltage boost. All right, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.